All right, this is a nice animation which is going to show you conceptually uh, where the sign graph comes from. All right, I think many of you know what the sign graph looks like, but we really need to make the connection here um, between the unit circle, which is a circle of radius 1, and the sign graph. So just remember, just remind ourselves that so we're, we, we've talked in class about Paul moving around the circle. So um, let's kind of ditch that analogy for now and just pretend that this is a point and it's going to move counterclockwise around the circle, right? Um, let's say we, right at that moment when the, when the point is there, let's say we wanted to know the sign Let's say we want to know the sign of that angle. Call that theta. And again, the radius, the hypotenuse is always one because it's the unit circle. And this is the opposite side, right? And that's the point x comma y. So if that's the point x comma y, then this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate, right? And sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is just y over 1, but that's just y. So in other words, this distance, this height, the height of the triangle or the height of the point at any time is just sine of theta. So I'm going to relate with this. The height of this triangle is called sine of theta. The actual height of the point at any angle is the sine of the angle. Okay, so for instance, let's do an easy one. Right, this point right here is the point 0, 1. So what's the sine of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians? It's 1, right? It's just the height of this. It's the height of the point, the y-coordinate of the point. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1, all right? What's the sine of, what's the sine of 0? Well, the height of the point, when you have it rotated, is 0. So that's why the sine of 0 is 0. The y-coordinate of this point is 0, all right? So as we rotate, right, as the point moves, the angles are changing. The graph comes about by viewing the angles as sort of our x-coordinates, our inputs. So you're spreading the angles out. You know, this would be 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, etc. And you plot the height of the point at those angles. So watch the animation. It shows you. And all you have to, again, all you have to focus on is the height of that point. Uh, So the height of the point is increasing, so the sine graph is increasing. The height is 1, the highest it's going to be. The height is getting smaller. The height is 0. The height is negative. The height is negative 1. And then the height is 0 again. All right, so notice, notice the only, so these two points are always at the same height, right? Because the the height of this point is always going to be the, uh, the sine of the angle. But what's different is that here in the unit circle, the angles are in the triangle. In our graph, the angles are down here. In other words, we're putting the angles in the x uh, on the x-axis, and we're plotting, we're basically plotting the results of the unit circle. In, a, in an x call in a Cartesian graph, an xy plane. All right. So again, right, the sine, the sine of pi over two, we rotate pi over two, is one. So we would label, we would label pi over two right here. When I plug in pi over two, or when I rotate pi over two, the height of the point is one. All right. So there's the sine one. I'm just going to do the cosine one quickly. And I might have to just exit out of this because it won't reset. 
MSI. So just quickly, let's look at the cosine, what the cosine graph is going to be. <clears throat> So if that's theta, that's hypotenuse is 1, and that's the x-coordinate. Remember that the cosine of theta, oh, and again, this point is x comma y. So the point's moving, that's the point x, y. So the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 1, which is just x. So in other words, for, co for cosine, we're not going to be tracking the height of the point. We're just going to be tracking basically how far to the left or to the right it is. In other words, the x-coordinate of the point. So we're always going to be focusing on the horizontal distance here from the origin, not the vertical for cosine. And watch, you'll get the same. It, it should make sense why the cosine graph looks like it like it does. So we'll do, I'm going to show the sine, show the cosine. And I hope it just shows cosine. Okay. So this time you're going to focus on just the horizontal length. Right now it's 1, so we should expect that the cosine graph should start at 1 and then get smaller and smaller. So look at the, the, the blue line. Now the blue line is 0, so the cosine is 0. The blue line is negative. It's in a negative distance, just the x value of the, of the, the x coordinate of the point. The x coordinate of the point is 0. The x-coordinate of the point is 1, and so we're back to the beginning. Okay, and again, technically it should be tracing, you know, this way. It doesn't just, it's a point doesn't really come back, but you understand. So hopefully this gives you a nice visual that connects the unit circle with our cosine and sine graphs.